What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. You know, technically the off season has not even started. Well, maybe for some, but not for everybody. But, you know, in this short period of time, the two Clippers players' names that just keep coming up in regards to trades is Marcus Morris and Zubak. And I know looking at some of the comments Zubak made several days ago in regards to he wants a bigger role with the Clippers and he would like to be able to provide a bigger role simply because he had career highs in numbers this year, averaging, you know, in, in 10 points. Whereas, you know, most of his career, you know, he... You know, he, all, he only averaged eight points, so he averaged 10 points this year. So that was like a career high for him in regards to that and in regards to rebounds. And, you know, when you think about that, uh, I think he averaged eight rebounds, of course. And, of course, you know, you got Marcus Morris, who a lot of people thought would be the third best player on the Clippers. And to me, Reggie Jackson definitely took that over and definitely not giving it back. So at best, he can be the fourth best player or lower than that. And the way, you know, Terrence Mann, the rest of them are emerging, you know, you have to say it's going to be tough, you know, for, um, you know, Marcus Morris, especially with them uh, adding Robert Covington and Norman Powell, because those two players definitely make up for what he does and more, especially Robert Covington. Robert Covington plays defense the way Marcus Morris actually used to play defense uh, a few years ago, I think. And um, I think he's a better, you know, defensive player than Marcus Morris at this point in his career, especially. And like I said, knocking down shots, he may can't shoot the ball in the mid range as good as Marcus Morris. But, you know, Marcus Morris inconsistency of scoring, you know, it definitely um, bodes, you know, well to look at it in regards to. Robert Covington can knock down threes and he can knock down a pretty decent clip if he's wide open or, you know, and that's the thing with uh, Robert Covington. I want to point out, too. He takes a lot of shots that are high percentage. He doesn't really take too many low percentage shots. And that's another thing I really feel like he's better than and better, better at than Marcus Morris. Marcus Morris will take some low quality shots at times. You know, thinking that he can really make up for his offense like he's the best player on the team and he's not even close to that. So when you're a role player, you've got to take the high percentage shots as much as possible because, you know, your offense is limited because you don't take as many shots as the best player or the second best player on the team. You take shots more like a role player. So your shots have to be, you know, on point and you have to be, you know, concise most of the time in your uh, approach and your decision making. And him as a role player, he should know that by now because he's been in the league long enough him and his brother and on top of that like I said the Clippers gave him 65 million dollars for him to be more consistent and that's just not something he is and then when you think about Zubak Zubak has all the talent in the world but he really hasn't ascended to the big man that a lot of people thought he would be because like I said he did have career highs this year in regards to points and rebounds he's 10 and 8 you know 10 points 8 rebounds but I mean I personally said you know me I, I think he, he should be averaging somewhere around 14 and 12 or 15 and you know 15 and 13 a game somewhere in there I mean I think he should be averaging a double double basically is what I'm saying not 10 and 8 10 and 8 is not exactly going to cut it for a big man in this league if you want to make yourself be known and have a presence and you know be a big man that you know that that's respected by a lot of other players in the league you see what I'm saying so with that being said you know you have to look at it from a standpoint of if the Clippers do let him go and they let Marcus Morris go, wouldn't nobody be surprised when Marcus Morris inconsistency and Zubak not developing or being more consistent himself and developing into the player that people want him to be the big man people want him to be, you know, um, th that's what's raising the question right now. And, you know, listening to or well, looking at the comments and everything that Zubak made also in regards to them asking them questions about, you know, um, will the Clippers keep him? He, you know, he believes the Clippers want to keep him. He believes that they won't, you know, trade him away or something like that and give him a contract. But I mean, him believing that and, you know, him knowing that is two different things. You see what I'm saying? And th that's the thing right now with him and Marcus Morris. There's so much up in the air, so much probability when it comes to those two players, because 
it's like the Clippers believe in those players, but they really don't feel like they know what they're getting out of them consistently every night. And it's like they are a part of the culture. They are a part of what the Clippers do. And they're a big part of the culture and everything. But at the same time, the Clippers are looking at their contracts being expendable because it's like if we're not getting the consistency out of them, well, one of them we can get out of Robert Covington. He makes up for him. And then, you know, Isaiah Hardenstein, he doesn't really make up for Zubak to me. But I mean, at times he definitely plays harder, you know, and he definitely plays more you know with more energy and more aggressiveness sometimes than Zubak does and that's just a problem you see what I'm saying and that's not something that Zubak can hold his hat on because sometimes when I watch Zubak myself I, I definitely believe he can make more of an impact he definitely can be more aggressive and he definitely can give the Clippers you know uh, another dynamic if he actually develops the way he's supposed to but the problem is the Clippers really don't have time to to allow him to develop to who he's supposed to because they're trying to win a championship now and honestly like I said before their window is starting to close in regards to winning a championship contracts are about to be up you know uh, Reggie Jackson's will be up I think next year you know uh, Nicholas Batum you know and then I think Kawhi and PG actually after their second year into the contract assignment they had the option to walk you see what I'm saying? So which that'll be the summer that they have the option to do so. So this is my point. You got to look at all these things. You see what I'm saying? So the window is closing and Zubak is trying to develop still and Marcus Morris is still trying to get consistency. Those two things are not good when it comes to either one of those players when you're trying to win a championship. They need to be where they're supposed to be. They need to understand their role and they need to play their role to perfection. And right now, uh, the Clippers are definitely looking at it like with those two players, you know, their role could be played a little bit better and it's not but at the same time like I said it's, it's hard to let those players go because of what they mean to the culture of the team and how they you know gel with the rest of the players and you know how the chemistry is and you know of course Ty Lu definitely says as well that you know he wants everybody to come back at least one more year he wants everybody back next year and with Ty Lu making those with Ty Lu making those statements before when the season ended for them after the after the uh, play-in tournament you know that definitely um, speaks volume too because he is the head coach and he is, you know, definitely one of the leaders, you know, on that team. So, um, you know, it, it's it's. It's going to be tough, though. It's going to be really tough, you know, to see if all of them come back. I really hope they do. You know what I'm saying? I hope they do get, make another run at it. I mean, I would like to see them add a point guard and everything like that. I would like to see them maybe add like another big man just to have some extra size there, maybe an extra body, stuff like that on the roster. But um, this team is really stacked. Um, and uh, like I said, they're, they're really stacked from top to bottom. And like I said, one player that doesn't get mentioned enough, like I said, is uh, a few videos ago is Amir Coffee. He's one that's definitely a free agent might actually uh, leave and he possibly has a chance to, you know, link up with the Atlanta Hawks from what the reports were saying. And I hope they find a way to keep him, too, because he definitely could serve some value because, I mean, we saw him this past year. There was several games where, you know, he had, he, he had th over 30 points, you know, several games for the Clippers. And he was an unsung hero and definitely a surprise, you know, coming off the back of the bench or the bottom of the bench like that. So, you know, with that being said, I mean, it's, it's um you know, this, this team is really deep. And like I said, Said, losing their depth is not something they ever should want to do so if, like i said before if they do trade any players or anybody like that they better get some very very good value in return not trading players and making stupid stupid decisions like they did with the eric bledsoe situation and everything i think that was just dumb they could have kept patrick beverly for eric bledsoe because as i said the man didn't even last half a season he was gone by all-star break because he just ain't no good and i've been said that i mean he, he's good at times he has his moments but we don't need moments we need championships we need consistency and those only thing and that's the type of thing to give you championships players with consistency which is the reason why specifically they're looking into possibly moving Marcus Morris because of his inconsistency along with Zubak now Zubak saying he wants more of a role I definitely understand that as I said before because he wants to you know be a more part of the offense and I, I definitely get that because like I said he's been there a while and you know he definitely sh sh should have the right to voice his opinion but at the same time going by his his actions on the floor it's kind of hard to do that when you're not you know developing the way we want you to and that's kind of sort of what they're telling you know Zubak in a way I don't know if he's really reading that but I mean maybe he kind of sort of is now now the comments are coming out that he's saying you know that 
you know, he hopes that the Clippers keep him and all this other type stuff. When just several days ago, he was talking about he wanted more of a role. So that went from wanting more of a role now wondering whether he's going to be on the roster next year. So, I mean, you know, I'm not saying he spoke too much or too soon, but at the same time, you know, you got to let your gameplay do the talking. You can't do much talking out your mouth. Your gameplay has to do it on the court. And like I said, I like Zubak. I really hope they keep Zubak. I like his upside. And like I said, I've seen him have games where he really, you know, can, you know, be a dominant figure. He had a couple 30 point games this past season, you know, for the uh, Clippers. But I mean, like I said, it comes in spurts with him. And nobody's asking him to score 30 points or anything like that. But I mean, giving them a double double 14 and 12, 15 and 13 would be very, very highly, greatly appreciated if the Clippers can get that out of him. And by now, he should be averaging that. And I'm not making no excuses for him. He should be averaging a double double by now. His career high shouldn't be uh, 10 points and eight rebounds. I mean, like I said, it should be 15 and 13 somewhere in there. I mean, but it's not. And so we can't really, you know, dwell on that. But this is the problem. Like I said, the Clippers have a hard decision to make because even if they keep one of them, they still got inconsistency. If they lose both, if they let go of both of them, they got to hope they can get somebody in return that can come in there and, you know, fill out the culture the way it is already and, you know, fill their role and play it to perfection. And that's sometimes hard when you try, when you let players go. And it's even hard when you let players go that you really like and care about. And it seemed like they really like Zubak and, you know, they like Marcus Morris and everything like that. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it went either way, to be honest with you. I wouldn't be surprised if they traded both of them and or one of them or they kept both of them and or one of them. I wouldn't be surprised either way because like I said, you know, sometimes, you know, it's, it's tough decisions you got to make when you got to, you know, when you're trying to win. But at the same time, you got to make the best decisions if you want to win a championship. And like I said, um, you know, it, it can go either way. Now, me personally, like I said, if they if they could find somebody for Marcus Morris, I would, you know, if 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 all possible. But I mean, you know, that's going to be tough as well. You got to find the right piece. I would personally keep Zubak, but at the same time, you know, uh, I could definitely see why somebody would think the opposite. Get rid of Zubak and keep Marcus Morris or get rid of both of them. So, I mean, like I said, it's definitely an up in the air type situation. And um, at this point, it's it's really one of them got to go or both of them got to go. I mean, pretty much that's where it's at as we speak. Uh, it, it is a slight chance. Both of them will still be there after, you know, when the season starts next year, but it's definitely uh, looking like, um, you know, one of them or both of them might possibly be gone if they could find somebody to replace them and, you know, really, really, you know, fit the culture of what the Clippers are trying to do. And um, like I said, it definitely wouldn't surprise me. But at the same time, like I said, you know, Ty Lue wants everybody back at least next season to try to make a run at it. So maybe they'll listen to Ty Lue and take his advice because really he runs the team and he's really the guy over everything, to be honest with you. And um, like I said, maybe they'll take his advice advice and you know go with that but hey that's my take on everything leave any comments in the comment section also check out my other videos if you haven't and hey cali out